Hey everybody, welcome to another Chase Case. This one is the April 16th, 2017 Storm Chase in Northwest Oklahoma. This is a very fascinating case study. I think you're really going to like it. We're going to really dive into why it's important to keep an eye on OBS for this one. So you ready? Let's go. Our natural starting point for these Chase cases is always going to be the SPC outlook. That doesn't mean you should just use the SPC outlook to forecast your chase. That's silly. But I do think that the SPC, these folks are the experts. They're right more often than they're wrong. And it's a good way to gauge the potential of a day. So with that said, here's today's 13Z SPC outlook. This is the one you would see right when you wake up in the morning. Slight risk, very broad area from southern Kansas back into the Texas Panhandle. If you look at the tornado risk, well, that also pretty broad area. So what do you do with this? That's a good question. We need to go to OBS and start dissecting what's going on with the environment this morning. So taking a look at satellite this morning, you can see there's a complex of storms moving through eastern Oklahoma, dragging a bunch of cool air, low clouds all across western Oklahoma. This is a huge portion of our outlook area from the SBC outlook we just saw. What do you do with this? It's nine o'clock in the morning. You can see here's what the radar image looks like. And you know, it, you, you start worrying a little bit, but it's still pretty early. If you look at dew points, you can see the dew points aren't actually wrecked throughout the region. You can still see 60s everywhere. This is a good sign. This means that there's probably going to be some pockets of instability at the very least to use as we get into afternoon. So as we fast forward to the 1630 outlook, this is a few hours later. We're right at the noon hour, just about at this point. You can see a slight risk looks pretty similar. Everything seems in place, but but if you go to the tornado risk, you go, wait, what? what's going on here? There's only a 2% risk uh, in a bit, this very small region. And so that your brain is going, oh no. And you know, automatically when you see an SBC outlook really zero in like this, you're thinking, I need to be there. Like you already start targeting for that region and that region alone. This is a good day for why you should continue to keep an open mind as you look at ops. Let's go to the satellite image for noon. So here's the deal. When you get to mid-April, you need to have sunshine by noon to get that good instability developing. If you have clouds everywhere, like really thick clouds, the day is probably not going to work out. And if you look at where the SBC has outlined that little 2% along the dry line along the Oklahoma-Texas border, there's plenty of sunshine. There's lots of sunshine on the west side of the dry line, and there's lots of sunshine on the east side with broken cumulus. But I want to draw your attention to a little area there in northwest Oklahoma. You can see this thin strip of brighter clouds, but there's a lot of sunshine to the south of it. That's an outflow boundary. It's plainly obvious on surface OBS, but also it's painfully obvious on satellite. And anytime you get an outflow boundary that's stalled with plenty of sunshine around it, that's a really, really, really interesting situation. And that has got my attention right now. And as we move through the afternoon, you can see this outflow boundary, sunshine is developing on both sides of it. It's not really moving. And you can see that those cumulus along it are continuing to agitate. Ah, th this, is, this is a really good situation. If you look at weather models, we're not showing that we want you to focus on odds, but weather models are showing wind shear is, a, is just slightly higher up here along this boundary. But what I do want to draw your attention to, which you can see on OBS, are dew point depressions. You can see out here in the Texas Panhandle along that dry line, those dew point depressions are running 15, 16 degrees, but along this outflow boundary, they're running five, six, seven. Why is that important? The smaller this number, the lower the cloud bases are. And with stronger shear, lower cloud bases, higher dew points, there's a lot to like about this outflow boundary versus that dry line today. So at this point, despite a storm developing out there in the Texas Panhandle already out there by Pampa, I'm heading for this outflow boundary where the where the queue is just more agitated. It's right there in Major County. That's west of Enid here. And I'm going to set up and I'm going to wait and see what happens. And I, I really do. I really believe in this outflow boundary today. So let's take a look at what my view is right now as we head into the five o'clock hour. 
Now I want to spoil this for a second. I was setting out on this outflow boundary for a couple of hours and I've been watching these. So, but we're hitting it as if we just arrived and you're seeing these towers. This is a really good sign. These are very agitated towers. This cumulus is getting ready to really take off, become a storm. You can see that base. It's already pretty active. That was a very big cue to me. I was like, wait a second. Why is there so much motion under this base? It's not even really precipitating yet. So when I really kind of realized, oh, this could get interesting really quickly, it was time to make my move and actually go and get underneath this storm. Uh, the thing with outflow boundaries is that they really enhance that low level vorticity or spin. And so as they do that, you could get really quick tornado genesis out of these things. So, I mean, it could be like a storm's going, it begins precipitating and bam, a tornado happens right there. And I, I, I was sensing it. I thought maybe this is what's about to happen. And as this tower really took off, you see the anvil start taking shape. It's like, okay, this is a storm. This is going to be a storm. There's no doubt about it. Let's go get underneath this thing because we could be getting ready to see something happen really quick. And here we are underneath the updraft and you can see there's a lot of movement already in this base. There's inflow coming in here from the right. There's a little bit, it almost looks like a clear slot there on the left. It's not really, but it kind of is. And yeah, you can see just a lot of motion into this base, which is pretty abnormal for a storm that really isn't precipitating. Here's the radar image. So, huh, this, this is definitely an interesting scenario developing because this storm already has a lot of motion in the base. It's barely precipitating. What's gonna happen? So I repositioned just a little bit to get a better view of this entire updraft. And you can see inflow continues into this thing from every direction it, it really is like you you can just the space is so active there's so much going on but you can see from the right all the way over to the left there's inflow coming in and around the mesocyclone this storm is just just barely barely precipitating with the core strengthening there's a lot to like the trend is upwards this feels really really promising Here's a zoomed out and slightly sped up view, just very slightly, we're at 150% to show you the merry-go-round effect that was going on with this storm. You can see the inflow coming in from the right and you can see it's almost like at, up on the very top all the way around, it's spinning all the way around. And right here on the left side, that's the area that you're going to eventually look for for a tornado. But you can see as you just sit here and take a look, this whole storm, the base is rotating. Again, you want to be watching this area on the left, and you can see there's a lot of upward motion and spin associated with that right now. And that's going to be the area that eventually will produce a tornado if this thing continues to strengthen. And you can just kind of see that there's a lot of motion there. We got to watch that. And here's the view even more zoomed out. You can see the rear flank downdraft clear slot right there on the left side. You can see where this storm was doing the merry-go-round effect, and right there, on the left center part of the screen, that's what we're looking for for a tornado. There's a lot of activity underneath that. That's a very active base. This is starting to really resemble a storm that produces. And here's a zoomed in view of that area. And you can just see uh, lots of rotation here. I would call it moderate rotation at this point as the storm continues to do its thing. That merry-go-round effect continues. You can see up here on the top left, that's the RFD clear slot working in. And there's just, you can see a lot of activity. That rising motion continues. This base continues to lower and rotate. It's usually a sign. It's usually a sign. And as we take a radar view of this storm, you can see it's taken on a much more supercellular look. It's strengthening. And you can see there's a pretty decent area of rotation located right here. Yeah, this, this thing has got all the hallmarks with it being on a boundary. I'm feeling pretty reasonably positive there's about to be a tornado with this thing. And watching this thing develop, you can see a funnel starting to develop underneath it. Folks, it's tornado time in Oklahoma. And you can see this funnel will continue to lower down and it's going to do its thing. It's going to produce a tornado. 
just cool. It's cool to see a storm go from that little tower you saw not so long ago to this right here, a tornado happening right before your eyes. This process never gets old. It never, ever, ever is going to get old. And just a cool little event along an outflow boundary in Oklahoma. Great, great way to really learn that Never turn your back on these. Outflow boundaries can be absolutely magical. Everything about this day was marginal, yet here we have a storm producing a tornado right before your eyes. And yeah, I don't know. It, it's just one of those things I always look at these at back with just some wonder, like how do you get in the right position? But also, I don't know, it's just really cool. This was the first of three tornadoes this storm produced over the next hour. Surprised if it does it again here pretty shortly. I I got a tornado, tornado on the ground. As time went on, this storm continued to drift south. Those low dew point depressions are really at play here with a very low cloud base. Over and over again, you could just see the effects of that low dew point depression along with the low level vorticity along this outflow boundary. The storm ended up producing another tornado, highly rain wrapped, but there it is. And then uh, just a little bit later, you can see the rope out stage right here. Pretty cool. This storm was getting ready to have some issues though. So when you're on a storm that's been producing tornadoes, anytime you see this type of a radar screen, whenever you got storms really blowing up on the south end of it, about to head north and really start interacting, that's a good sign. You're about to have some issues. Sometimes storms make it through these types of mergers, but on days where the conditions are kind of marginal to begin with, the odds of you actually seeing your supercell survive it are very low. Everything about this storm with darkness beginning to fall is screaming that this is about to become a big complex of storms. So I think that means our storm chase is just about done. So three takeaways to take from this chase. The first one, always keep outflow boundaries in your consideration for chase targets. Second thing, if you are targeting an outflow boundary, you want to be more aggressive in being under the storms as soon as possible. These things can wrap up. And the last thing, the SPC is great, but you can always go against their forecast. So hey, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, and we will see you next time.